there is a dramatic development to report in Syria's civil war. U.S. and NATO officials say Syrian forces are now using short-range Scud missiles against the opposition. It comes amid fears that an increasingly desperate regime could be planning a chemical attack. President Bashar al-Assad is thought to have a stockpile of 400 short and medium-range Scuds. The White House would not confirm the reports. If true, uh, this would be the latest desperate act from a regime that has shown utter disregard for innocent life, utter disregard for the lives uh, of its own citizens. Again, the idea that the Syrian regime would launch missiles within its borders at its own people is stunning, desperate, uh, and a completely disproportionate military escalation. The leader of the Syrian National Coalition came to Marrakesh to convince the international community to step up assistance to the opposition. Mu'adh al-Khatib got more than that. The coalition has been formally recognized by 130 countries, including the U.S., as the legitimate representative of the Syrian people. Well, it's a very significant first step, but it is a first step. What we're looking for is... Uh, a recognition with teeth. We're looking for recognition with support, with tang tangible results. The Friends of Syria also reiterated the right of the Syrians to defend themselves, a move which may pave the way for more military assistance. The coalition said it's ready to form a government in areas the rebels control if it can get tactical weapons to till the playing field in its favor. But Western countries still remain cautious about arming the rebels. I believe that of all the meetings that we have had so far of the friends of the Syrian people, this will turn out to be much the most significant. Uh, much hard work was put into the previous meetings. Uh, but now there is a much greater momentum uh, behind what we are trying to achieve. We don't know when the suffering of the Syrian people will end. But we do know that there is more international and Syrian unity on this subject than at any stage in the last 22 months of this crisis. Um, and I fully agree with the Prime Minister of Qatar that it is time for those in the regime to make the decision to bring this to an end. In the words of one of its residents, welcome to Free Aleppo where mounds of rubbish rise and the destitute struggle to make a living. The rebels now control large areas here, but this is what's become of this ancient city. Ahmed has lost his home and his job. So every day, he sifts through the filth and the stench so he can feed his children. This revolution was supposedly about a better future, a better tomorrow, and many of the residents here still cling to that hope. And they believe that the ongoing fighting, not just here in the city, but also outside in the countryside, is worth that struggle. In free Syria, petrol now comes from a barrel at the side of the road. Three times the price it was before the revolution. People queue for hours in the cold for bread. Now ten times more expensive and in short supply. The bombardment has subsided. But the suffering hasn't, and the fighting has just moved elsewhere. While intelligence sources claim Scud missiles have for the first time been used against Syrian rebels, Human Rights Watch is alarmed at the use of incendiary bombs being dropped on populated areas. Both mark an escalation in President Bashar al-Assad's struggle to retain power.